Let's turn some affordable and also easy to find items from Dollar Tree into some high end looking fall decor that you're going to love this season. Hi everyone, my name is Shannon from the DailyDIYer.com and the first item we're going to grab from Dollar Tree are these crates. You're going to need six of them total. We're going to make a really cute pumpkin. So we're going to take these crates outside. I love using spray paint, especially on wood items like this that have some nooks and crannies. The spray paint is going to save you a ton of time. So we're just taking the spray paint, going around, and then once that's dry, flip it over, do the back side. Make sure to get all six of your crates total, completely covered. I would suggest two coats total, and then you will have what looks like the start of our pumpkin. So in the end, this is how we're gonna have them all arranged. And to put them together, I have a really cool product. I love this stuff. It's a heavy duty, permanent double-sided adhesive. I will link this down in the description box below, along with all the other supplies I'll be using throughout this video. I do have 25 awesome DIYs for you in this video, my absolute favorite fall decor DIYs. So what I'm doing is I'm actually taking just half of one of those strips because these are, like I said, very strong and heavy duty, so you don't need a ton of this stuff. So I cut them in half. We're gonna put three together uh, side by side top and bottom and then we're also going to add some of that double-sided adhesive on the tops of the bottom crates and put these together tops and bottoms and so that way we can stack them if you want absolutely you can use a wood glue for this or a hot glue for this too but check out this double-sided adhesive i love this stuff makes for quick easy no mess diys so here we have the bottom of our pumpkin put together looking very rustic, very farmhouse chic. Now let's make the top. Now this is going to be the stem of our pumpkin. You can find these finials at Hobby Lobby for only $2.49, a great deal for a piece like this. I'm just taking a dry cloth and some brown acrylic paint and I'm actually putting it on like a wood stain because I still wanna be able to see some of the wood grain showing through. You can obviously absolutely paint this completely brown if that is the look that you're going for. We're gonna add some more of that double-sided adhesive onto the bottom of this finial and then just stick it right on the top of our crates. And once you set this up, you're kind of starting to get the look of a rustic pumpkin. We're going to update this a little bit more, add a little bit more detail to it, and we're gonna add some burlap ribbon to the top as well. You can find this at the craft store, the department store, pretty sure this is from Dollar Tree as well. I just cut it in half, it's a little bit too wide, and we are going to then just tie this in a knot around and kind of look like the little leaves of a pumpkin. You could do green burlap ribbon for this too, if that's the look that you're going for. I also came in with my scissors, just trimmed the ribbon at an angle to finish it off. And then we quite aren't done yet either. This is a great tip. Grab some fairy lights from the Dollar Tree. I love these. I feel like these are the best deal that you can get all year long. I'm just going to use some regular tape and taping some of the wire onto the back of the pumpkin. That way you can turn it off and on and get a really pretty lit up look, which I love the look of fairy lights during the fall time. It gives you that cozy vibe. And I did this with that pa or regular scotch tape. So that way I could take this off at the end of the season. I can use those fairy lights for the upcoming Christmas season and winter season as well. So that's a little tip so you can reuse some of the things that you purchase and they don't just become one thing. If you want to, you can permanently attach them with some hot glue or even some staples and a staple gun. Another great item to grab from Dollar Tree that you can craft with year round are these clothespins. You can find these pretty much anywhere, Dollar General, Walmart, other dollar stores. And we're also gonna grab these awesome leather leaves that are at Dollar Tree as well. I feel like this is such an on-trend, uh, very classy item that now Dollar Tree is carrying. So I grabbed a pack of those. You're also gonna need some jute and we're gonna be using some mini clothespins from the Dollar Tree's Crafter Square section to make a really simple, quick and easy garland. So go ahead, take your leather leaves out of the bag. We are going to trim off the stems. They look very fake and plastic. So we're going to get rid of that and we are going to head over to our mantle or you can put this on a entryway table on a wall from some nails and we're just going to take our jute and add that to the space that we want and then start clipping our leaves onto the jute with those mini clothespins. If you wanted to, you could use the regular clothespins too, totally up to you. And it's just quick and easy to just clip these right on. I like to start in the very middle, work my way um, from the outside back in so that way I 
get a very evenly spaced display of these leaves. So I love the very minimalist look of this, but you can get creative here. You can add ribbon, twine, some scraps of fabric hung from them if you want, and really create a very customized look to your own home. Let me also draw your attention to the candy corn and the ghost on this fireplace. I will have those DIYs coming up here shortly, so stay tuned for that. But first, back at Dollar Tree, I love that they carry these paper mache boxes. We're gonna grab a smaller round one, and we are just gonna use the lid for this DIY. And now we're gonna grab out our regular sized clothespins, just to very simply go around the bottom of this lid and clip those clothespins all the way around. And now you can use this piece in several different ways, but we're gonna turn ours into a candle holder for fall. Back in Dollar Tree, I love that they carry these leather tags. Very, very cute, very on trend. They also have this baker's twine. I love red and white baker's twine, but this brown and white is so perfect for fall time. So I picked this up and I'm just taking that and wrapping around the center of this candle holder a few times. And then we're gonna tie it off, just tie a knot and trim off the tails. For this one, I'm gonna use the leaf. I just took the leather part off of the top that it was hanging from, and I'm hot gluing that onto the front of this candle holder, setting it on the shelf, and then at Dollar Tree, you can get these glass votive holders that fit right down inside there. Add a LED votive candle or tea light candle like this one, also from Dollar Tree, very affordable. Love the really cozy vibe that candlelight gives during the fall time, and this looks so pretty, very easy to make, no mess and also very affordable and chic. Next, we're grabbing some more clothespins from Dollar Tree. They come in a pack of 36. You get quite a few, but for all these projects, you might need a couple packs. This, we're also gonna pair with some bamboo skewers from Dollar Tree. We're gonna take those and attach some of these clothespins onto the top with a point with some hot glue and make some really quick and easy photo clips for our home decor. I absolutely love black and white photos all year long, but especially during the fall, it just really gives your home decor that cozy look and just goes with any kind of decor that you might have. I printed mine off about two inches tall by about an inch wide. It seemed to be about the right size to then clip onto these clothespins, and then you can add these clips into your fall decor. So we are going to make our own vase here. This is also a Dollar Tree vase. Very pretty for Halloween, but I'm obsessed also with copper for fall. So grab this spray paint. It's one of my favorite spray paint colors to paint because it gives it such a high-end and classy look. And after this face got two coats of spray paint, let it dry. Look what it looks like once I took it inside. It is just gorgeous and amazing. It just does magic, that spray paint. I will also make sure to link that down in the description box below for you. We're also gonna add some of Dollar Tree's uh, leaf greenery into this. I swear Dollar Tree has some really great greenery year round. Loved these, very neutral looking. Just stuck the pick right down into the vase. And then we're going to trim off the bottoms of the barbecue skewers so we can get some varying heights with our photo sticks. A very pretty way to just display some of your favorite memories. So why in the world will we grab a pizza pan from Dollar Tree? Well, we're gonna make the cutest pumpkin you ever did see. We're gonna take a bunch of our uh, regular sized clothespins, 85 to be exact, so you'll need a few packs of these. And we're just simply going to add some hot glue around the edge of the pizza pan and hot glue those clothespins all the way around the edge. Now for this one, I highly, highly recommend using some spray paint. You got a lot of nooks and crannies in there 
and you also have wood and metal. So I highly recommend using a spray paint to turn your pumpkin orange or whatever color you want your pumpkin to be. This just goes so much more quickly. A couple coats of that spray paint and now we have the outline of our pumpkin. We're gonna come in and add his little jack-o'-lantern face. This is some black vinyl. Uh, you can find vinyl at Dollar Tree too. If you have a Cricut machine, you can absolutely cut this out with your Cricut machine. And if you don't have a Cricut machine, just use your pencil and make your simple little jack-o'-lantern face pieces like his eyes, nose, and mouth. And then once you have all those pieces cut out, go ahead, remove the paper backing from the back and it basically becomes like a heavy duty uh, decal or sticker. You place them on the spots that you want them. Make sure to push them down, get all of your air bubbles out. Then we're gonna make the stem for our pumpkin using some green acrylic paint here, just coloring in about four of those top uh, clothespins, adding a little bit of greenery with some hot glue. This greenery is also from Dollar Tree. Really cute stuff, right? And then this is pretty cool too. This is wired jute from Dollar Tree. It has wire inside jute. Pretty simple, pretty basic, very easy to manipulate. And we're going to twist ours around a paint bottle to give it a little bit of a curly cue and a, uh, vine hanging out from our pumpkin so just kind of twisting it some more finding where we want to put it and then hot gluing it into place we're going to do two of those one on each side it also helped to kind of push it up underneath the clothespins to make sure it was going to stay in place one other thing we're going to do is take some more of this burlap ribbon from dollar tree and make a hanger for the back just cut a long piece we're going to loop it at the top so that both the tails are touching and together on the bottom side flip your pumpkin over add some hot glue tape it down add however you have to actually get this thing stuck on there i always like to do some duct tape and a combination of hot glue to make sure it's really good and it's gonna stay and then you can just hang it up you can put it on your wall you can put it on your front door you can put it on your mantle wherever it's gonna look best in your home Next, we're gonna make three really cute, different Halloween-inspired clothespins. And the first one's gonna be a really cute ghost. So we're gonna need some white yarn. You're also gonna need a regular-sized clothespin and also a one-inch size wood bead. Take your hot glue and add some to the clippy side of your clothespin and add your wood bead on top. Then you're gonna need something a little bit longer than your clothespin and wood bead. In this case, it's a Dollar Tree little uh, notebook case that I had. And we're gonna take our yarn and just wrap it around a bunch of times and we're gonna make sort of like a tassel out of this yarn. Once everything is wrapped, go ahead, clip yourself off an extra length of yarn and then remove your yarn bundle from whatever you wrapped it around. Just be careful, you wanna make sure you keep it in that circular uh, state that it comes off. Then you're gonna put your clothespin in the middle of your yarn and then lay your yarn bundle on top of that extra piece of string that we snipped off. We're gonna be adding that yarn underneath that wood bead, which you can't see, but as you are tying the knot, you will see, you will feel it kind of slip into place and you are just going to kind of adjust the ribbon or the yarn as you go. So that way it looks nice before tying it off completely. And then we're going to cut the bottom loops of our yarn off the tassel shape where the bottom of the clothespin is. You can see we now have the cutest shape of a little ghost. You can decorate up your ghost however you want. You can use some uh, fabric glue. Um, I'm just using some little pieces of black felt here. We're just cutting them down to size, freehanding it, and then hot gluing on the face. So here is our cute little ghost. Very cute for a tiered tray sitting on a shelf. Be a cute project to do with kiddos. But we're not done yet. I still have two more cute Halloween clothespin ideas to share with you. The next one is going to be a mummy. We're going to grab some white fabric from the Dollar Tree. We're going to take this, lay out the fabric, take your scissors, snip the end, and just rip it up the side. It's going to give us a nice textured look for our mummy wrap. 
So we're gonna set that first one off to the side. We don't need that. We're gonna snip it again with our scissors at the bottom, about a half an inch wide, and then rip that piece up all the way up the side. And we're gonna use this piece here to wrap around our clothespin. To do that, add a little bit of hot glue on one end, put your fabric down in the hot glue very carefully, and then start wrapping very randomly. You don't want it to look kind of peppermint candy cane like you really want it to look sort of tattered when you get to the end hot glue the end down trim off any excess and then add some wiggly eyes for your little face super cute so quick and easy next up let's make a bat to do that we're going to need some black felt mine has some fun glitter in it you use whatever works for you and we're going to freehand him some wings so I have a white colored pencil here and I'm just flipping it over to the back side and drawing on the back side of the felt one wing and then folding that in, in half and then cutting out the wings. That way I have two wings total that are pretty much the same mirrored on both sides. Once you open it up, see so you can you have two wings now. Now we need to work on our clothespin. So we're gonna take it apart, take the metal part out and take some paint, paint our clothespin, the wood part all black. Once the paint has dried, you can put your clothespin back together and then we're going to hot glue our wings onto the back. So you're going to add a little bit of hot glue onto the side of the clothespin and glue it right down onto the center of your bat wings. If you wanted, you can also paint the spring so that way you don't see that metal and it kind of all will blend in a little bit better. Totally up to you. You can add some wiggly eyes onto your bat as well. Like I said, completely up to you. Take these ideas, run with them, make them your own. But I think this is so cute, especially in this miniature tiered tray. Now remember earlier I told you I was going to show you how to make the candy corn and the ghost on this fireplace. Well, now is the time and they're actually made out of very affordable and inexpensive tomato cages. So head to your local farm store or place that has a garden center, grab yourself some of the most cheap garden cages or tomato cages for these next several projects. And the first one we're gonna work on is a project that I was so fortunate to actually go on our local morning news station and create, which is this fall leaf topiary. We're gonna start with that project. That was such a fun experience doing a live segment with Show Me St. Louis in St. Louis. If you are local to that, I'm sure you probably heard of that, but I will put the link to the full segment down in the description box below. So if you wanna go watch the actual live segment, you can still see it, pretty cool. Let's make this topiary though. So you're gonna need some leaf garland. Dollar Tree has leaf garland, but I found these on Amazon. They actually have lights in them already, so it kind of saved me a step. Sometimes it's worth it to just splurge a little bit. Save yourself some uh, work and time, and we are going to put the tomato cage together, bending those edges together over so they have loops and hooks on them and then putting a zip tie on there so that way we have a point at the top of our tomato cage and then it's just as simple and easy as grabbing out a ton of zip ties you can find these at dollar tree too and just wrapping them around your topiary you're going to need several on the very bottom first that is going to give you a nice base and it's going to give you extra lights and leaves on the bottom as you can see here we're just trimming off the tails of those zip ties as we go and then just just wrapping it around and zip tying it every now and again so it stays in place. I did end up doing two of these strands of garland on this topiary to make sure I had really good coverage. It was easy, it was quick, and you can leave it like this if you want, or you can head to Dollar Tree, grab one of their larger sized planters or planter that you already have, and we're going to make a little stand and base for this topiary. So I had the perfect size wood round that fit right down on the inside of this. Just use some hot glue around the edge so it would sit on top and stay in place. Probably be a good idea to put some rocks or brick or something in the bottom of this too before you close it up so it has some weight to it, doesn't go flying off on you. Here's our base and then we're going to grab some Spanish moss. Also from Dollar Tree, it's the only place I buy this stuff from because you can't find it any cheaper. And we are gonna add some hot glue to the top of the wood round and add our Spanish moss. 
Once that's all covered, you can go ahead and add your topiary right on top of there. If you don't have a lot of wind, just set it right on top. If you do have a lot of wind in your area, then maybe take a staple gun and staple the bottom of the cage down onto the wood round so it will stay. Or add some rocks, some bricks on top of there and kind of hide it in the middle of your topiary so it will stay in place. But how pretty is this at night? Very cute and a simple DIY that will look so cute on your fall porch. Now let's make a side table with a tomato cage. I love this. It looked really, really cute with my fall decor next to my fireplace. So I'm going to show you how to do this too. We're going to take some heavy duty pliers and snip off the points off of one of your tomato cages. So we basically make a flat top stand now and bottom stand. We're going to take this outside. These are like a galvanized metal. So if you like that look, you can leave it if you want, but I'm giving mine a couple coats of some black spray paint. I'm loving Dollar Tree Plus's craft section. They now have these great wood rounds. These were only $5. Brought that home. We're going to sand it down. Make sure it doesn't have any splinters or, you know, hard, sharp edges. We're also going to take the sticker off the bottom and we are going to stain this. So obviously here, just giving it a good sanding. You can find these sanding blocks at Dollar Tree in their hardware section too. This is my favorite acrylic wood paint that kind of gives you that stained wood look without having the dry time. It's called Traditional Burnt Umber by Americana. I will link it down below. You'll see me use it time and time again. It just gives it the perfect colored wood stain look while still being able to see the wood grain show through the wood. So here's what it looks like once it's dry. We're gonna flip it upside down. We're gonna put the smaller circle on the bottom of our uh, wood round here, add a little bit of hot glue. That's just gonna tack it into place. Then we're gonna come in with a staple gun. This is my favorite crafting thing ever. I preach this. It is a battery powered staple gun. No air compressor needed. No, you know, a lot of pressure needed to pull the trigger. I don't like the regular uh, staple guns. I just never have the muscle power to like pull and clip them. This has no kick with it. It doesn't make any noises really. I will link it down below. It's a great item to add to your craft stash. We're also going to add some felt uh, little dots to the bottom of this. I didn't want to uh, scratch or hurt our floor and this makes it really easy to just kind of slide around if we need to. And here is our simple easy side table. So as you can see, just added some fall accessories to this to dress it up, but this is an item that you can use year round. Decorate it for the different holidays and seasons. Add it where you need it. Be great on a porch if you need a little side table for drinks or by the pool to set sunscreen. So sky's the limit here. Hopefully this idea inspires you to create your own. All right, now it's time to make our candy corn. The ghost is soon to come too, so keep watching. We're gonna head to Dollar Tree, grab some yellow, orange, and white uh, mesh. I don't quite know what this <laughs> decorative mesh. Um, great for wreaths. We're gonna use it for this candy corn. Also grab some of these lights. These are perfect. They're like candy corn lights. I grabbed three packs of them, put them all together. We're gonna start by adding the lights on our tomato cage first. So these are really pretty. Make sure that they all work. That's a good tip before you start zip tying them onto your cage. Hate to have a dud and then it doesn't work. So as I said earlier with the fall leaf topiary, this is how you actually get them to have that pointed top. So take some pliers, bend the top edges down and into the middle. And then we're gonna use a zip tie and gather those all together and zip tie those hooks. And that'll give you that point. All right, so here's what it looks like all cinched together. And hopefully that gives you a better idea of what I was talking about earlier to give you that pointed topiary, or in this case, candy corn shape for our tomato cage. Now it's time to add those lights on. We're gonna use some zip ties for this as well. We're just gonna zip tie the top to the very top of our tomato cage. And we're gonna run each one of these strips or lights strands <laughs> down each leg of our tomato cage. Now 
Now we're gonna kind of hide those lights with our decorative mesh. So we have orange, yellow, white, and zip ties. We need them in that order. So orange is going to go first, and we're gonna start by just tucking it around the bottom of our tomato cage using a zip tie to then hold it in place. We really want the start of this to have a good connection so it doesn't come undone and come unraveled. Then start wrapping around the bottom circle and use those zip ties to zip tie it. We really wanna make sure we also cover that bottom circle so you don't see the sil silver metal. Then go ahead and keep wrapping it around and getting lots of good coverage so you see lots of that yellow. You may need two bundles of the decorative mesh depending on the look that you're going for. I really wanted to cover up as much of the lights as I could because once you turn it on at nighttime, that's when you'll see the lights, but I really didn't want to see the uh, cords of the lights. It also helps to kind of twist and twirl your bundles so you get some texture and it's not all just flat as you're wrapping. Same thing, we're gonna continue this process using the orange decorative mesh next and then the white will go on top. And ta-da, here we have a tomato cage candy corn. I love the way this looks when it's lit up, especially at nighttime. I feel like you get a lot of bang for your buck with this decor piece. Add several of them to your porch, to your front yard. Definitely make sure you have some outdoor safe lights if you're gonna be putting it out in the weather though, but super cute. Now let's make that ghost. So for this one, we're gonna do the same thing we did with the side table, and we're gonna take some heavy duty pliers and snip off the points of our tomato cage so we have a circle at the top and the bottom. We need to make a head for our ghost, so I'm using a soccer ball and a t-shirt. Yep, Dollar Tree carries t-shirts and soccer balls. Grab those, cover your soccer ball with the t-shirt. That's gonna give you the white color of the ghost head. And then we're going to take and snip off all the excess fabric so we don't have that in the way. Now you're gonna need a rubber band or a hair tie and we're going to gather all that excess fabric at the bottom and just wrap the rubber band around so now it stays, all the fabric stays on the ball. Take some hot glue and add that onto the smaller circle of your tomato cage and set the ball right on top. Now you're gonna need a large piece of white fabric. I'm pretty sure this is two yards of white fabric Got it from Walmart. I don't even know if you can get it from Walmart anymore. They took the fabric section away from our Walmart, but you can even order it on Amazon. We're just gonna lay that over the top of our ball and our tomato cage and trim off the corners because we want it to have a nice rounded bottom. So our ghost will need a face. I just took a pencil and free-handed two eyes and a mouth just two smaller ovals and a larger oval to give me the outlines I needed. Then we're gonna come in with some black fabric paint, paint those in, make sure you put something down underneath your fabric so it doesn't get on your work surface and bleed through the fabric. And we're just gonna paint those eyes and uh, mouth on with a paintbrush. Make sure to let that dry completely before picking it up and then laying it back on the tomato cage. At this point, you just wanna make sure that your face is put onto the ball straight and even, so make the adjustments here. And then to make sure that this stays on our tomato cage, I'm using a little bit of hot glue in the back and also some safety pins. He is pretty cute when he's done, isn't he? Especially paired with that cute candy corn off to the other side. But let's take this up one more notch, not quite done yet. Head back into Dollar Tree. You can find these LED strobe lights, so fun. Add some batteries to them. You can see 
They have several different colors in there and they blink and flash and you can set your tomato cage right over the top of the light and get a really cool and spooky effect. Hocus Pocus is my favorite Halloween movie. Let me know what your favorite Halloween movie is down in the comments below. So I have some cool Hocus Pocus themed DIYs for you right now. We're gonna grab three of these pumpkin spice scented brooms from Dollar Tree. Oh my gosh, they smell so good. Grab some dowel rods. And then of course, the colors of our sisters. Ribbon, I'm talking about. Pick whatever color you want, but since we're going with the Hocus Pocus theme, we are sticking with the sisters' colors. We're gonna take our dowel rods, glue those down in the center of our broomstick bottoms, and then just take some hot glue and glue the ribbon around the top. You can skip this step if you want. You can add jute here if you want, or whatever color ribbon you want, make it your own. We're gonna do that three times or as many times as you want, depending on how many brooms that you buy from Dollar Tree. And we're gonna make a garland out of it. But let's also distress the ribbon a little bit and even the handles a little bit if you want the dowel rods to give them more of a rustic, witchy look. Very similar to our wreath garland earlier, we're adding some jute to the front of the mantle and then tying our brooms on one at a time, making sure that they're evenly spaced and centered um, where it's gonna be hanging. Very quick and easy. If you wanted to, you could add a little bit of hot glue. I like to be able to take my stuff apart at the end of the season, that way I can use it in different ways the next year. But I love the way this looks, it's so cute. You can add some more to this garland if you want or keep it simple like this one. We're also gonna grab one of these cute little wood signs from Dollar Tree and make ourselves a little Sanderson sister sign. So we're gonna remove the handle from this and then get to work on our sign using the traditional burnt umber acrylic paint again that I keep showing you. We're gonna use that, put it on, kind of smear it on with a foam paintbrush so we can still see some of the wood grain of our sign showing through. If I can find the file to this design, I will put it in the description box below. If you don't see it down there, then I probably wasn't able to find it again. Hopefully I can and I can give it to you guys. You can download it and use it as well. If not, you can find them on uh, Creative Fabrica is my favorite place for files or just go to Cricut Design Space and see if they have something similar. And I just created it so it would fit right onto the front of this sign. I'm using a little light box here. That's another tip and trick if you don't have one of those. Highly recommend them. So good when you're doing stuff with HTV and vinyl. I just applied the vinyl onto the front of the sign. Quick and easy, Sanderson sisters, bed and breakfast, children stay free. So cute. Again, a great sign that you can then personalize with different colors if you want. Totally up to you. I freaked out when Dollar Tree had black candles. I was like, this is the black flame candle just waiting to be made. So grabbed one of those and we're gonna peel off the plastic from the outside and use some Goo Gone to get all the residue off because there was a ton of that left over. We're just gonna make this really rustic, adding some nautical rope to the bottom of this candle using some hot glue, wrapping it around a few times. And then we are also gonna add a sticker to the front of this, which I do have a free printable for you as well. So check the description box below for that, any of the files that I've mentioned throughout this video that I can find and link for you. We're gonna be adding that sticker with the help of some vinyl sticker paper. You just run it through your printer and it basically is printable vinyl. So this is the file that I'll have linked down for you, a free printable, print it out whatever size you want. We're gonna cut it down using a paper trimmer. You could use scissors too. And then we're going to distress it and add it onto the front of our candle. And how are we going to distress this? We are going to use our traditional burnt umber acrylic paint again. I know, I'm telling you, if you don't have this in your craft stash, you need it. I'll link it down below or you can find it at Hobby Lobby. You just need it. We're putting this on with a baby wipe. It's basically going to put a little bit on, but you're still going to be able to see the printed vinyl underneath. Gives you the distressed look without it covering it up with thick paint. 
Next, let's make a wall hanger or a door sign. You can find wood rounds at Dollar Tree, but I found bigger ones at the craft store. They were about similar in price. So this one's a little bit bigger and I will link these down in the description box below too. It's just a very thin wood round. I painted it white. We're going to use some black vinyl for the design here. I did have to print it in a couple different sizes or a couple different pieces so it would fit this bigger sign. But you know what? Sometimes that's what you have to do whenever you're crafting to make some things work. So three pieces and we got there for this bigger wood round. And then I found this metal cat that just needed to be a black cat. That's going to be our binks for our sign. Using some black spray paint just took it outside and instantly we have our Zachary Binks. Then to add it to the front of the sign, we're going to grab some foam mounting tape from Dollar Tree, put a bunch of those on the back and then stick it onto the front of the sign. I like these because it's going to give you a raised effect so it doesn't just sit flush on the sign, kind of more of a 3D look. Added some jute or rope on the back of my sign with some glue and some duct tape like I usually do and just hung it from our front door. This would be cute in the center of a wreath as well or added to a fireplace, a shelf vignette. Very, very cute. These chalkboard houses at Dollar Tree reminded me of a haunted house, so picked up one of those. We're gonna make this so simple and easy. This is why I like vinyl machines because they just make your life a lot easier. You can hand paint this if you want, or you can create a decal and just slap it on the front and it looks professional and it's quick and easy. So we're just creating sort of a uh, custom design here, just a bunch of hocus pocus. I added a little hat to the top that fit right into the peak of our house and a cute little uh, broom at the bottom. Again, if I can find this file, I will link it for you down in the description box below. If you don't see it there, then I probably couldn't find it. Crossing my fingers, I saved those though because they are so cute. Now let's make a charcuterie. I love charcuteries for everything. Parties, birthdays, graduations, and Halloween. Let's make a Halloween candy charcuterie, grabbing a ton of different candies from Dollar Tree traditional Halloween candies and also ones that are just in the colors of orange, purple, and black. So this $5 Dollar Tree Plus section cutting board is going to be our base. Loved these LED cauldrons. You add water to them and they make a bubbling foamy mist and it's got lights in it. So cool. Great deal. Only $5. And these just have fun adding your different Halloween candies to your board. I also grabbed out some smaller ramkins so it could kind of hold some of the other smaller pieces and give me a little bit more variety. Just laid it out working from one color to the next color until I had all of my yummy candies displayed in a cute way. These are also from the Dollar Tree, so cute. Add your cauldron. I'm gonna give you a big look of this whole table at the end of this section. So stay tuned for that. But we're gonna make another Halloween treat using some Dollar Tree supplies. For this one, you're gonna grab some of the brownies. They're pre-packaged. If you wanna make your own brownies, absolutely. You probably get a lot more for cheaper doing it that way. But if you don't have time or you don't have the skills, like I'm not a great baker, grab these. You can also find some green icing at the department store. We are literally going to just squeeze this right on the top doesn't have to look pretty. You don't even need a fork or a knife to spread it out. And then I also found these cute little green sprinkles at the department store. If I can find them, I'll link them down below. And yay for Dollar Tree for carrying some new crafting baking supplies. So they had to see these little eyeballs. I just stuck them right into the icing, added a pretzel stick on the top to look like a little broomstick. And we have little cauldrons for our hocus pocus party. 
We also need some cute drinks for our party. So I made these designs. I'll link this down in the description box for you. Some free printables. We're going to grab some cute soda bottles. I found these ski bottles that were green. Perfect color for this. We're going to use a paper trimmer and trim down our printables so they will fit the size of our bottle. Use a tape runner, adhesive, glue, whatever you have, and then just wrap your soda bottles with those free printables. I had so much fun putting this together. We had a fun family movie night watching the new Hocus Pocus movie together. It was so easy and inexpensive to make this custom decor and also super easy to use Dollar Tree treats and items to have some snacks. I'm going to get a ton of questions about those cauldrons that are holding some other snacks in them that I found at Home Goods. So hopefully you can find that. I know that can be hit or miss, but I know I'm going to get a ton of questions about that. Now let's make a fun DIY shirt. This is the shirt that I wore to the Hocus Pocus party. I found a green one at the Dollar Tree and we're gonna make our own cre creative custom design. For this one, you're gonna be using some HTV, so you will need a vinyl machine for this. If you don't have a vinyl machine, hit Etsy. You can find some cute designs out there or even some already made shirts if you don't wanna make your own. But if you've never tried HTV before, I love it. It's fun. It's basically a decal just mirrored and backwards because you want the vinyl to be sticking to the front of the plastic that we're gonna be then applying to the shirt. So here, I did mine in a couple different colors doing the black color first using a little heat transfer machine that I have from Cricut. I'll link it down below too. Added that, peeled off the plastic, then it was time to add the second color, the purple here. I like to put a little uh, cloth in between the heat press and the plastic to make sure it doesn't melt. Once it's cooled, you can remove the plastic, flip your shirt inside out, make sure to heat iron the backside too. Make sure it goes into all those fibers for you and it'll last and last longer. And look how cute this is for $1.25 for a t-shirt and some HTV that I had on hand. Not bad to come up with a last minute costume idea for our Hocus Pocus party. Whether you have your own family movie night planned or you're going to be hosting your own themed Halloween party, I hope that these ideas gave you some great inspiration. And look at our little honey. This was last year. She's over a year old now. She's grown so much. But this brought me so much joy to see her when she was teeny tiny. She was only probably about 12 weeks old here. Just cute wearing her Dollar Tree bat wings for these little clips. All right, let's transition out of Halloween back into fall, back into the candle section at Dollar Tree. We're gonna grab two of these white ones. Dollar Tree also has these great um, muffin tins that are pumpkins. We're gonna make some floating candles. You're also gonna need some uh, wicks and you're also gonna need your kitchen for this craft. We're gonna head in there. We're gonna put a pot of water on our stove and we're gonna put our candles in before it starts boiling. So let your candles come up to boil about medium uh, heat. You don't want high heat for this. You don't want your glasses breaking at all. Slow is the way to go here. So we're gonna slowly melt that wax down into those jars, take the wicks out. You can reuse those wicks if you want to. And to color our candles, to make them look like pumpkins, I grabbed some of these orange uh, wax melts from the Dollar Tree and we're gonna slip those right into the jars. I will say next time I would add more. One was not enough. It didn't make it quite as orange as I was hoping, so keep that in mind. You can also use a barbecue skewer to kind of help mix your wax, get the color all incorporated. The cool thing about this too is it's going to make them scented. The white candles at Dollar Tree are not scented. But when you add those wax melts in there, you have the beautiful scent come through. Now we're going to take our wicks and put them down in the muffin tins from Dollar Tree and very slowly, very carefully use oven mitts. Safety first here. Be careful. Obviously, this wax is incredibly hot. We're going to carefully pour that wax into our muffin tins over our wicks. So my wicks are from Amazon and I'll link them down below. They also came with these popsicle sticks with holes in them. That's what helps to hold the wicks in place and center them until the wax had cooled. Mm -hmm. 
And here's what they're gonna look like once they cool. And this is why I said that I probably would have added more of those wax melts to get more of an orange color because they're just kind of tinted a little bit orange. Or you can actually buy uh, candle coloring too and mix that in and get more of an orange color. Once these are cool, they pop right out of the muffin tins. We're gonna take some scissors and then just trim our wicks down to about an eighth to no more than a quarter inch long. We're gonna take our candles and put them in a vase full of water and look, they magically float on top of the water. Very cool. These bubble vases are from Dollar Tree too, but you could put these on a dish and actually not put them in water at all if you didn't want to, completely up to you. But these are such an easy fall DIY, smell good, look pretty. And I think this would be so pretty at a wedding or a fall themed bridal shower, baby shower too. And here's a little tip. If you aren't going to be using your candles all at the same time, just add them to a Ziploc bag. It'll keep them nice and fresh until you are ready to use them. As soon as I saw these metal signs at the Dollar Tree, the first thing I thought of was pumpkin pie. So it looks just like a pie tin, doesn't it? We're gonna make ours into a pumpkin pie for the fall. So go ahead and start by removing the handles or the hanger from this and then take some tape and put it on the outside edge where those holes are. We're gonna be adding some resin to this and we don't want the resin seeping out. You can also take some hot glue and add it to the inside edge of this tin and help plug those holes up as well. And then we're gonna be adding some resin. So this is the kind that I have, but the cool thing is, is Dollar Tree now carries two part resin. I think it's a great deal. And if you can find it, grab it. It's great for crafting with. And if you've never used resin before, it's so easy. It comes in two parts, a hardener and the resin itself. And you're going to mix them together in equal parts. So let's say you do a quarter of a cup of one, you're gonna do a quarter of a cup of the other put them in a dish together, and then I'm gonna be using some mica powder to create some color and some shine for this pumpkin pie. And to do that, you just kind of tap a little bit in a little at a time and mix it together until you're happy with the color. I found my mica powder on Amazon, I'll link it down below, and it comes in a ton of different colors. It's really fun to play with. You just wanna make sure you are mixing it with a popsicle stick and you're mixing from the bottom up and trying your best not to mix in any air bubbles because that will then transfer over to your project. So here is the color that I ended up with um, after I was happy mixing three different brown colors and then adding it to this little tin. Then a tip here is to kind of shake it, get some of those air bubbles out. You can also take a heat gun over the top and that'll also help pop some of the air bubbles that come to the top. This is what it looks like 24 hours later. We have a nice little pumpkin pie that we cooked overnight. Pretty cute, right? Then we're gonna grab one of these cake decorating kits from Dollar Tree along with some spackle. Now you can find spackle at Dollar Tree, but this stuff that uh, my friend Courtney over at Creative on the Cheap had mentioned it worked so much better. You can find it on Amazon and I'll link it down in the description box below as well. It is much more fluffy and it's got more of a cake icing texture, I guess is the right way to put it. So the cool thing is, is you just use it just like you would regular frosting. We put our little Dollar Tree cake decorating kit together and then scooped the spackling into the piping bag and then used that to decorate our pumpkin pie. I have to say, I am not a cake decorator. I've taken de cake decorating classes in the past. I'm not, still not great at it but it's still fun to play with. So just grab a piece of paper, test your skills a little bit first before you move over to your project. And you know what? It's not gonna be perfect unless you're a cake decorator. And if it's, if it's not perfect, that's okay too. It still looks really, really cute. Pretty happy with the way mine turned out. This looks really cute displayed on a little cake tray. So cute for a kitchen, so cute for a tiered tray. And the best part about it is you don't have to worry about bugs getting to your decor.
I am sure you remember these paper mache boxes from our previous project. We're going to grab another one for this project along with some bamboo skewers. We're going to make a cute pumpkin luminary. So you're going to need a ton of these little uh, bamboo skewers because we're going to wrap the edge of the bottom of this box. So this is the bottom. We're going to keep the lid though. We're going to use that next. I'm just using some hot glue. We're going to put some on the bottom of a skewer, pointy side facing up and going all the way around the outside bottom of the paper mache box. Once I got about halfway around the end with the points in it, I just took some wire cutters and trimmed the points off. I want to make sure that these were going to uh, glue really easily into the lid of this. So what I did is trimmed those off and then started hot gluing the lid to each one of those skewers and then repeated that process until I was finished with all of the skewers going all the way around. Now let's cut a hole in the bottom of this luminary. We want to be able to make sure we can get a candle in there, right? So just using an X-Acto knife, cutting a hole out of the bottom and then making sure my LED candle fit inside there. Now it's time to take this outside. We again are going to spray paint this orange. Obviously, whatever color spray paint you want to use, go for it. Leave it plain if you want. But if you're going to paint it, highly again suggesting spray paint with all the nooks and crannies of this piece. This just makes it go so much easier. You just want to make sure you are paying attention and making sure to get all the inside uh, skewers that are in the middle of your luminary. Then we need a stem for our pumpkins. So this is a wood peg. I found them on Amazon, but you can get them at Hobby Lobby and craft stores too in their wood sections. I'll link these down in the description box below. We are going to cut a X mark in the top of this luminary and then slide our peg right down into that X. Then we need to dress it up, of course. We're gonna take some of our greenery from Dollar Tree and also some of that wire jute and hot glue that around the stem. And then this is how this works. You just take your battery powered candle or tea light, place it down on your table or wherever you're gonna put your luminary and stick that right over top. And then you will get a really pretty look at the nighttime, but it's still so cute during the day too. Dollar Tree literally has some of the best signs, the best prices, and they get better year after year. Even their blink signs. I love this chalkboard one. We always count down the days till Christmas. Why not count down the days until Halloween? So I am just going to kind of let this play. I feel like it's super satisfying to watch vinyl decals get weeded and applied. And this one I did in a couple different colors, so it's fun to watch this come together. If you don't have a vinyl machine, obviously use some paint pens, create your own design, freehand it, or you can hit up craft stores, Etsy, and find designs that you could um, apply if you don't have a vinyl machine to make your own. So this is just fun to watch. This is a fun little saying that I loved too, and I'm just gonna apply it onto this chalkboard sign from Dollar Tree.
I think this turned out so cute. I love that I can use it year after year and it looks so cute on my fireplace next to my candy corn tomato cage that we made earlier. All these things really come together when you start creating your own DIYs to make things fit and work for your space. And then this is my absolute favorite fall DIY of all times. I'll probably share it year after year because I love it that much. <laughs> it's a paper mache pumpkin, but we're gonna make it look like metal. And we need one of these wire pumpkin forms from the Dollar Tree as our form and also some newspaper cut into strips. We're gonna take some Mod Podge, add some water to it and use that as our glue. Mix it all together with popsicle stick and then run your uh, newspaper strips through the adhesive and lay them on top of your pumpkin. First going horizontally, then going vertically, and that is what's really going to reinforce this. Let it dry overnight and you will have a cool pumpkin form. So I basically let this sit overnight so it could harden and dry all the way. And then I took an X-Acto knife and cut it away from the back of the pumpkin form and then just removed the metal backing. So we would just have the paper form that will now hold its shape. Then we're gonna flip this over to the back side, take some scissors and just trim around the edge. That's gonna clean up the edges for us so it'll look nice. I also wanted to add a jack-o'-lantern face onto this. This is totally up to you if you wanna do that or not. But if you are, put it back onto that wreath form so that way it has a backing to kind of hold it as you are taking your X-Acto knife and cutting out each piece of your face. Now in comes our magic spray paint again. Take this outside and hit it with some black spray paint first. We are gonna do the inside and the front of our pumpkin. And then the magic spray paint, my favorite of all, is the copper spray paint. So you saw it just do magic on that vase earlier with our uh, photo stick arrangement, but watch what happens when you take it to the black spray paint of this pumpkin. It just turns out really, really neat and cool. It looks like you pieced metal together to make this jack-o'-lantern face. Then we're gonna dress it up again using some burlap leaves. You can find these at Dollar Tree and also Walmart, which is where mine came from. And I'm just adding those leaves to the top of the pumpkin and also adding some wire um, little curly cues on the top for the vines. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, leave me your favorite fall emoji down in the comments below and hit that thumbs up button. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell. Select all so you never miss a new video here at The Daily DIYer. Thanks so much again and I'll see you in the next one. Have a creative day.